I've told a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. Hey everyone, welcome to Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, today I'm here with... Hi, I'm Marco. And... I'm Pete. And... <laughs> Solo Wookie. And today's episode is about Hondo. And, uh, yeah. So, Hondo uh, Anaka is a pirate. And I was just kind of curious what you guys, in the very beginning, thought of him as a character. Well, I think one of the big points is something you brought up before, Jen. You said it, that he was similar to, like, um, kind of like to the droids, right? Like, that, isn't that kind of here how the theory all came up and why we're... Yeah, because, that like, uh, so Hondo uh, pops up before the prequels meeting meeting Django and then he goes all the way through until Galaxy's Edge and yeah like not many, many characters can say that they did that yeah and I mean for the Skywalker saga right like R2D2 I don't know if it is it confirmed finally now yet or whatever who knows when they confirm it or not but like R2D2 and C3PO R2D2 for the longest time even before the new stuff was always supposed to be in fans eyes the uh, Skywalker saga took place through the eyes of R2D2 um, and then like when you brought up, you're like, well, that's cool. But isn't that we were talking about that for so I don't even know why we, somebody said that. And you're like, yeah, it's like Hondo is the new version of that. The EU version of that. And I was like, oh, cool. Well, you're going to do a video on that then because it's <laughs> kind of the truth. Um, yeah, Pete, I mean, I don't know if anybody else is anything else to reject with that. We can get to going to the timeline or. No, I'm cool. No, it seems legit. I mean, it. he's got little cameos kind of through the whole thing. So they're, I, I, I think, I think you're spot on. I think we're going to see a lot more of them. All right. Well, let's kick through some of the cameos then, Jen. Is that what you want to do? Okay, yep. cool. So we first out start seeing him uh, because I time while you junkie, we start seeing him in Clone Wars. He, you see him come off his ship. Speaking of that, uh, we were told that we needed to show his ship. And if anybody said it's supposed to look like a saucer, if anybody says anything else, it looks like <laughs> off the show. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything else about it. That's it. So there's this one movie. Hey, get out of here. Bro. Some <laughs> TV <laughs> show other stuff tied to it. Muting. Just muted him. He just been muted. Uh, we'll take about a time out here in a minute. So so uh, where we see him come down here is actually to quote unquote help Count Dooku. And as you know, uh, he actually then just uh, or kind of takes Count Dooku, kidnaps him. And they go and call out to Palpatine, who at the time is in charge of the um, the Galactic Republic. And they're mm -hmm. like, hey, we will uh, trade him for some uh, Coke and other stuff, right? Or whatever. Space, spike. <laughs> yeah. space dust. Yeah, yeah, space dust. Whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> spice. Or, uh, or spice, yeah. Because it's not. it doesn't have anything to do with Dune at all. No, not at all. So they send these two guys you might have heard him before. One of them is Anakin Skywalker and the other one is Obi-Wan Kenobi to go negotiate uh, to make sure that's true before they send the spice. They actually send the spice in the meantime, put uh, the pirate who uh, just can't get enough of putting people, kidnapping people decides then that he's going to kidnap Obi-Wan and Skywalker and some to the separatists. Uh, in the meantime, though, um, you know, He's not such a good guy here, right? Like, he's kind of a dirty scoundrel, I guess you'd call him. And his men betray him, and they shoot down the spice ship. And then there's a lot of other stuff play out. Finally, oh, Hondo. Yeah. Uh, finally, Hondo's like, oh, I lost Dooku, blah, blah, blah. The Jedi let him go. And like, hey, Obi-Wan's just like, you know, of course, Anakin wants to break his head open. But um, Obi-Wan's like, yeah, no, just let him go. So they let him go. Um which kind of was the right move because later on you see him in Clone Wars. Um, and this happens. Mm -hmm. He, uh, Anakin ends up, um, Anakin ends up calling Tano and telling her like somebody's coming to do a weapons delivery. It turns out that it is Hondo delivering weapons to the rebels. Uh, that's yeah, That is Saw Gerrera's sister. Uh, a couple other people on the planet that start off the rebellion thing. Obviously that doesn't go too well for them in the end. Yeah. And it's funny because real quick, he comes, drops it off, and then they're, they're, they're being attacked. Instead of, like, helping them, it's like, okay, peace out. <laughs> oh, yeah, he takes the money to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely has 
no qualms about leaving that situation. Jen, would you like to explain to us what's going on in our next frame, please? Ah, so uh, it's little little kid Boba and Aurora Singh. Hmm. They are coming to Hondo for some help. And Aurora Singh actually used to date Hondo. Ooh, spicy. Ooh, la la. Uh, in this scene, too, uh, Hondo brings up that he knows Django Fett from back in the day. And I believe refers to him as a, a an, very honorable good, man. an honorable man. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a year because it's about my year time to watch it again. So uh, calls an honorable man, which is kind of cool to see that he's got some love for him. Um, around that time, too, you start to see him in comics. Well, not chronologically you do. This comic comes out a lot later. His cameo O's? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you call this a fr- I mean, hey, look, this is already the Cad Bane book. So, But uh, it also... If you see, we kind of blew it up here. Thank you, Pete. Look at, see, this is what I need. Somebody that knows how to do some stuff on a computer. That's him. I should put another arrow so you can see him again because he's still Well, it's all right because this is what I did. That's Pete. That's Pete's skills. This is my my skills right here. (laughs) This is my skills. So that's where he's right there. So he's right there. Um, That's in two. He also shows up in three and four. I think in three he throws out like, his first, first spoken words. It's not much bigger than that, and I think it's one point four. No, he's just bidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's bidding. It's like one point four M, and I think it's him who's. But whatever. They didn't even attribute it to him, though. It could have been anybody. It's just yeah, like, well, you're right. You're right. It was right above him, but yes, yeah, you're right. It could have been anybody. Could've been it anybody. Been. Um. So, with that being said, he does show up in a couple other things. I don't know. Do we want to go through the whole rundown? Where do you want to go, Jen? You tell me. Uh, just keep going. Okay, so. Uh, then after that, we do see him in Rebels, and he actually has longer bone spurs now. And he's older. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's the one thing with him, right? Like, he, in, when we first see him in Clone Wars, we were kind of doing the math on this. Now, remember, we, we actually originally shot me and Jen Soul shot this video uh, like three months ago, and we've decided now that that was not good enough. So we're trying to make it even worse this time. <laughs> and, and but that time we were discussing. That like he had to be in his twenties, right? Because of the timelines where we know he was. He started out in Clone Wars. We first see him. He's in his twenties. Uh, his species easily lives into the hundred and twenty, the age of one hundred and twenty. That's a good life. That's not living too long. That's not expiring too well. Not all of them do because you can't have an average because they they have a tendency to shoot each other yeah. for some reason. Um, and also, I think the the I was saying like the weak. I say their species weak, weak way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you got it. Like you can ask me how to pronounce something. That's yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but they have really tough skin, and they, they tend to be used as like bodyguards, and well, they look like Jack Palance. Like, there's like a lot of leather going on there. They're like now, isn't, isn't that the same species that was on Jabba's barge. I think. I mean, so. Yeah, there was one of them on Jabba's Jabba's barge. Not him particularly, mm-hmm. not to our knowledge yet, but yes, there was a couple. And, and how do you pronounce it again? Weak way? A week away. A week Weak away. away. <laughs> uh, you knew when he asked, how do you <laughs> set up for a terrible joke? Why did you buy the yes. terrible joke? Set him up and knock him down. And we also we also see a, a, the species again in Man- Mandalorian. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. The bartender, yep. That's that's how this whole conversation started. Was that how it all started? So at the first, yeah. Cool. Uh, so real quickly, the... Uh, as you see here, the bone spurts, though, the bone spurts have to do with their age. So the longer the bone spurts. Now, these were overpronounced. They actually reduce them as this episode, as these episodes go on and stuff, because then I think they figured out, hey, we should probably uh, reduce them. Some of the good parts, the standout parts in the cartoons, too, because uh, you asked about this. This is when uh, he ends up uh, Darth Maul. He ends up, yeah, Darth Maul. <laughs> Darth Maul calls him something, and he's like, "Ah, I take that as a compliment." I and mean, he didn't mean it as a compliment. <laughs> they, uh, he actually get he at, at one point Hera sends out uh, Sabine's friend there to the right, uh, Okana, to go find him, and he finds him with Gregor and Wolf, like mm-hmm. hanging out and partying mm-hmm. on Lothal. Like, like he also shows up obviously with Ezra at one point mm-hmm. on a plane, and that he actually stole. Uh, from another pirate. Um, 
what else do we got here? Oh, back in Clone Wars, when Ahsoka was like young, he she had a bunch of Padawans. She saves him, so he's got like more than just selling the weapons, like a tie to all the even the little Chewbacca back there. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, he this is actually the first point. So this is a turning point right here towards the end of Clone Wars. He decides not to abandon Ahsoka Tana, and when you see him in Rebels, he seems to be a little more like his progression as a character isn't such a pirate out for himself so much. He still does have like this weird moral compass where it's like, yeah, the weapons things. He was like, okay, I'm out of here. I'm taking off. There was one other one too. My favorite because you know, they do it, but he was in the seven samurai episode where he tried to destroy the town. Mm -hmm. uh, that was also in clone wars. But when you start seeing him in rebels, he starts becoming more comedic, right? Would you say not as angry and aggressive? Well is that pre or post when he loses his gang, his, his pirate crew? Oh yeah, because of uh, you're talking because of uh, the Empire. Empire. Post. Yeah. Well, no, he lost it. Yeah, he lost it because well, Grievous came in the first time and cut down, and then that's when Ahsoka Tana. This is like Grievous came in and pretty much was like, yeah, the we're in charge. The separatists are in charge of this. That was the first time he kind of lost half his people because if you see the guy in the backgrounds guarding them. He's a weekend. They kind of bow to Grievous for a and little I, bit. I think that kind of yeah. has a lot to say about his disposition with the rebels and joining them and, and leaning more towards the rebellion and helping them in, in a scoundrel slash pirate way because he gets duped on by the Empire so many times. He finally kind of starts to not in he kind of almost starts to hate the empire just because he i mean he loses ships he loses spice he loses paydays they're always yeah. jacking his goods and he's finally like all right guys i've, I've had enough so i think well, yeah it was with the separatists out. first but you're right when he goes into but, rebels yeah. and he's stealing this yeah the separatists first and then you're right i think so is right on that i think there's that feeling of like all right well the jedi will stop me from doing something illegal but like they'll also pay me and not like take all my stuff and kill yeah, me. Really like, about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And plus, he did this thing here in the you know. Obviously, he says at one time, you know, I had an old friend. He was a Jedi. Um, yeah. and he's referring to like Obi Wan and, and, or, and says, I think we were friends. And he goes, I think we were <laughs> friends. So like when you see him in Re that was in Rebels when he's doing this right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. by this point, but we see him again in Rebels and he's he is actually stealing a ship. <laughs> <laughs> the pirate. Yeah. He well, he's solo up. at that point. He had no crew. Like he was by himself. Yeah. So at that point, you're right. The gla the galaxy or the Galactic Empire had already just like <laughs> defeated his crew. But it happened twice. Once, uh, well, it happened more than twice because he's been. The more that his crew turned on him, the more the Separatists attacked him, and then when the Emperor like, Empire, like you mentioned, Jen, was the final blow. They like yeah. completely just decimated his crew. Um, then he just walked around with a uh, Ugnat. So like, well, because he was in jail, right? Like he was in jail in a in a um, shipbuilding, like he was in encroachment camp. Can we say that? Yeah, okay. Um, so. Isn't that what it was? Like they were slavery mm -hmm. forcing them to, yeah, yep. with a bunch of Ugnats. And that's, yep. and Ezra and then broke him out. And when they did that, he kind of was like, eh. and then he's like, hey, Ezra, I'm stealing shit, but I'm not because I need you guys' help because I'm abandoned out here because I couldn't work the controls. You know, he got a little funny, and I think he got more enjoyable, right? Like, I, the character was, I mean, you know, you saw him here when he's, like, shooting and blowing up little people with, like, sticks and doing the Seven Samurai. You're like, it's yeah. kind of a bad guy. Even when he abandoned, uh, even when he abandoned uh, Saw Gerrera's sister and Ahsoka on the planet, you're like, right, he's still not kind of a good guy. Like, he kind of would joke around, like, oh, thank you very much. I'm out. Yeah. Well, even yeah. when he boarded that ship that had Ahsoka and the, the uh, younglings, like when they're when they're hiding below, like in the, the the ducks, they hear him. They hear them say, "Oh, Hondo said like dead or alive," and it's like, w "What?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's not. I mean, he has that moment break right there at the end of Clone Wars where you see like, well, maybe he'll. Yeah. Now looking back on, it, you're like, that was the break where he maybe started turning. But yeah, they had to do it again. I mean, obviously to to get him going uh let's go through some of the comics then besides darth maul then the first time we kind of oh well we could go through some more cartoons too because he actually also shows up on um force talking about Lincoln. yeah sure yeah forces destiny and he is with uh mm. what's her name starts with the q K kayla or kira 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 
Yeah. Which is Solo's uh, girlfriend mm -hmm. or kind of girl, whatever that relationship is too. That's a messed up relationship. Um, so he shows up with her there too. Means they have a relationship with her. So that still continues. Then probably his big pull is in the IDW stuff. Cause of course they have the link there that came out with seven. This is the cover a, there is a cover B the cover that if you really got an extra one and want to see, give uh, Jen a Christmas or new year's present, you can give her one of these. Ah. The one in so 10. I don't have to go dig it up. Yep, the one in the RI. Yeah, one in ten. Um, and that's kind of cool because he's in there. The deal with the big blue bird. Then he gets into like a lot of the Falcon stuff through the rest of those series. He does. Sh there, he does show up in this magazine too. Uh, there is a B cover that's pretty. I actually the um, the comic book the P the PX version is this. Mm. I love the yeah, comic entrance. Book. It's a good cover. Good cover, right? like that's an okay cover. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. Vader, and but that was like because of the time where Soka with yeah, with in Rebels. Okay, I get that, but then you got this as the PX, or they don't call it the PX, they call it, the oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then didn't, didn't Pete find out was it issue 144 also? Yeah, I was looking, I forget where, where I found I'm the to find cover appearances though, yeah, yeah. Like 142. Uh, and then something else. There was an, also an earlier one. Not too hard to find, though. Yeah, that was in the Inside Guts. Not too hard to find cover appearances in Marvel because they eventually put him on Galaxy Edge number okay. three, the mm -hmm. A cover. Uh, they also put him on the B cover. They also put him on the variant, <laughs> which is actually kind of tough to find, by the way. Uh, That's a cool cover. I like that cover. Yeah. Both of these are. I don't even look like he had well, no lenses. Oh wait, this is the variant, right? In the background, his wanted poster. And the other one. This one right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is wanted poster. Yeah, this yeah but the they variant. can't find him because he's wearing hipster glasses with no lenses. Oh, it is. Yeah. That's the variant. He also, by the way, connecting with other people. I have this one too. This is kind of tough to find. Uh, that's the when he's with Afra, the second print. Uh, for, there you go. I want to make, for, make oh, Thank you for number four. This is technically him, right? Ooh, here. Yep. That's him. Oh, yeah. uh, so that's kind of cool. That's a cool one to get. It's a second print too. Later on, when the the it started getting popular around three. So like the second Wait, it's harder to find the second prints. That's the Afro Volume One. No, it's Galaxy Z number Z. four second oh, okay, print. Okay. Yeah, a little tougher to find. Um, in those two, he runs into obviously. Uh, Doko or or see, I'm even trying to put the names on the bottom and screwing them up. This is just terrible. Andor, Andor? yeah, Duke Andor. Who, if for you don't know, this guy has a lot to do with like he's, oh, he's got. got a, Sounds like a heavy metal band. He's he's oh, got a like yeah, antique Andor. hall, but they also have him at like all the Disney resorts now. Like he's part of the antiquities place. He has a couple books that are in there, so he he links up a lot of cool stories and stuff. He's kind of like. Like what they thought Maz was going to be, what you thought Maz was going to be, he's kind of like the other, the newer version of Maz. Um, also, which is Jen brings this up a lot too, he shows up in some of the Crimson stories with uh, Sidon, and like they're the Crimson Raiders, they're the ones that have the last live clone. Um, but in one of their storylines, what's it called? The Book of The Book of Hondo. And what's it about? Uh, it's basically like all his rules. Like even when you first see him in uh, season one, episode eleven and twelve, he actually says one of the rules about uh, having hostages. Like two is better than one, but three. Like the, the the more the more like the better. Like I don't know. It's it's very close to another series. We won't talk about it. But the rules back the rules of acquisition. But it's but the book of Hondo's version of that. <laughs> <laughs> get treated to twins and uh, what to do in a crisis situation. Rule number two: what a crisis situation is. <laughs> so we don't have to talk about that other franchise since yeah, Mr. Mutey here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, but now that you said mute, we might send out mute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it isn't like his mom or something's rules or something. I can't. Yeah. That but works. then he starts just like saying saying them. Like almost every episode, he'll like say one or two of them. Like even in the Rebels, yeah, I think he mentions them. Just it's like yeah, he definitely does when he runs a, that Ezra picture earlier. He says there's definitely one of the rules there because he says about the droids and like oh well if you have one ship you have two like my mom always says you have this over there yeah he does a lot of that stuff like Zombie Land yeah yeah number two Cario 
There you go. Uh, he does play. have another ship, by the way, too, uh, eventually, which is this mm -hmm. ship right here. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. By the way, now that I think about it, uh, Razor Crest is blown up. Anyways, uh, that's, I was just joking. They're not replacing that one. He's not coming back. <laughs> <to Razor Crest. laughs> that's uh, sad. But he's, uh, he's around because he's around. Galaxy's Edge takes place in between seven and or eight and nine. Well, it's yeah. I mean, some of it does. Yeah, some of the galaxy has does Isn't because there kind of a missed opportunity. Like instead of Benicio del Toro, wouldn't it have made a lot more sense if that character was Hondo? Yes. You know what I mean? Like oh, no. in the jail cell. Oh, that would have been cool. Like, it would just, I mean, he was a, a arms dealer. Like he was off for himself. He basically was Hondo, but it wasn't Hondo. It was Benicio yeah. del Toro would have started. been cooler. Dang it! It would have been cooler. I know. I was thinking about that when you were talking about him. I think uh, unless you're casting for the usual suspects, you should probably leave Del Toro out of any movies. But uh, it could be good depending or, on the role. Or Fear and What's that? Fear and or Fear and Loathing. Yeah, fear and mm, he, he was a good uh, did Dr. Gondo. Yeah. Okay. So, but as Jen mentioned already, so he shows up in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, he actually shows up like, so he makes a deal with Chewie. And they're out to try to get Han Solo, the Millennium Falcon, after Han Solo dies. Is it dies? Dies? That's the word. <laughs> dies. Well, more than once. Uh, um, and he makes a deal to try to help Chewie out, where he can kind of run some stuff with Chewie if he does. And he sets up a lot of people in that, um, like a lot of bad people, including some people you see in Maz's castle. But either way, um, and then you see the, both. I mean, they have it set up already, right? There's the anima tonic version and then there's this guy. yeah there's the animatronic and like uh, a costume person i can't remember if this was uh welcome to the hall of presidents yeah i can't remember which one this was but as you can see the bone spurts are bigger than they were typically in the clone war series but smaller in the rebel series and it looks real re real it looks real real it looks real real in mm -hmm. real life mm -hmm. in real history mm -hmm. just like game of thrones um so has those hipster glasses on though with no lenses <laughs> He's getting older. He needs readers. Um, he just needs that little S curl in his hair, and no one will ever know. Exactly. Yeah. He took the lenses out because they just kept getting dirty. They had to clean them. I think they end up calling it uh, Onaka Transport Solutions with with the Chewy thing, and that whole thing was because he needed he needed money to repair the Million Falcon. So he's like, ah, uh, fine. Like I'll do these things. Yeah. Yeah. I think they kind of just added in to add to the park stuff too. But then you got with that, you got some of the people. I think that's, you know, we're seeing it a lot with the show Mandalorian too. Like um, there's a lot of people out there. I don't know a lot about star Wars. There's a lot of people <laughs> out there who don't like, they don't like, I think it's tough because I know we got a lot of fans there and a lot of in-depth fans that love the, the deep dive, but there's a lot of people who never watched, rebels or or clone wars or played the video games or did i mean there's a lot of guys right now that are like it's the first i haven't made it through all of clone wars i've missed quite a bit of it i'm working my way through but getting there you're one of those <laughs> people huh um <laughs> well listen like especially before season seven there's people that i had i watched it with and they're like oh just watch it and i'm like no you have to especially for clone wars season seven you have to there's a setup Right. And yeah. so in in rewatching some of these for, for this episode, Hondo, I'm like, oh man, we, we kind of just passed over these because it wasn't that pivotal to season seven, but this is it's pivotal later. Oh shame on you. You didn't make you a think... the whole thing. You oh. like skipped episode. Well, I watched all the way through. I'm saying people were like, Hey, what do I need to catch up with to watch season seven? And I was like All the Clone Wars, all the Rebels. Like, oh, we to be fair, I did not watch all the Clone Wars before I watched season seven either. I watched a good chunk of it, but not all of it. Well, uh, even like looking back, like the Mandalorian episodes to like set up for Boca like so that's one thing that came up when watching Mandalorian, especially oh, the Darksaber popped up and everyone's like, What is that? Or my brother and I freaked out and people were watching it with were like, and, and we're like, That's the Darksaber. So I feel like for Hondo, once we see Hondo in a live action thing, people will be like, who is this? And we'll be like, oh, watch these episodes. Well, no, that's what I was going to say, though. You might say that. But I like when they started doing the uh, a lot of these books, like even when he shows up in some of the adventure stuff, uh, like the later stuff when he does the, the Falcon thing and he shows up in 
oh, what was that? The was it the rise of the cr red Cuisinart or whatever the whatever this guy's whatever this guy's story was, whatever his story was. When they shows up in that type of stuff, um, that's like I think people go to the park and they're like, wait, why isn't Han Solo? <laughs> Who's who's this guy and why is there two of them? Why is there an animatronic? Whatever. Why is there a robot and why is there one that actually is a person? Like going like, what's with that? And that's how you know it's like the Mandalorians take Mandalorians don't take their helmets off. Well, they do. Uh, they do. They don't. And as long as people aren't jerks to people because they say wrong things, because I mean people say wrong stuff about Star Wars all the time. You know, I mean, I think people will learn from it, and it will. Like I think that that's kind of one of the things you have to look at like some of these characters that they're building this is why the high republic is coming because they can now they have the ability to like hey look everybody can be a fan again like everybody yeah. and we can show all these realm worlds and i think hondo is a perfect example of that so now instead of having just the skylocker saga seeing it all through the eyes of r2d2 you can now see the entire universe through the very shifty eyes of no glass wearing grandma <laughs> reader having hipster wannabe hondo. I think that was a brilliant observation by you, Jen, and that was pretty cool. Well, hopefully this leads to us maybe covering Clone Wars and Rebels. In what? Just Remember like maybe a quick like knockout of like if you want to get caught up. Do you know how long Clone Wars is? <laughs> well, that's why I didn't get through all of them. Because it's long. But so Rebels, you guys have to it, into bits, it takes right? me like two weeks to get through Clone Wars every year. That's why I usually do it during the Christmas holiday. Because like, there's nothing that says Christmas like kicking your family out and watching Clone Wars. <laughs> but breaking into Love bits, you, you know, like... Out. Like what? What things are must watch? Like, are, like I, ideally, you're going to watch all, all of Clone Wars and all of Rebels. Yes. Ideally, yes. all right? of it. And watch then Freemakers, you have to watch Freemakers also because they're really good. <laughs> and you have to watch the spinoffs uh, and the holiday special. Don't leave out the holiday special. The original holiday special. Now the new one's pretty good too. But you also have it. all the old stuff too. All the Lego old stuff. The first stuff, uh, like uh, the Yoda Chronicles, because it's hilarious. You have to watch all that stuff. Um. You, you can are. probably fast forward through some of the resistance. Well, there's one person, I think it's Raid. There's one person that likes resistance. Like they wrote me a message saying, Well, I think you should give that another chance. I like Misha Gray's character. And that's the only thing that like watching the whole two seasons, I was like, I thought she was like a Dr. Afro type of a person like out in the galaxy. And I'm like, I want to know more about her. Huh? What was your character's name? Was it Misha Gray? That was the actual character's name? Yeah. I don't know. Which one was she? She was the um when they're in that uh temple that that was hidden and he touched something and he fell into the trap of the Sith temple. And she was down there and she like she knew how to read all the writing and she's like, "Ah, we're trapped down here." And then she helped them get out and like so she was kind of like a Dr. Aphra type in that storyline. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe she is. Maybe I mean other people thought they saw Dr. Aphra before too, so <laughs> I don't know. She, uh, she did not say Dr. Afra. No. I, just, I, I, know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just joking around. Come on. Also, uh, very reminiscent of Indiana Jones in the reading of hieroglyphs and archaeology. Who, Hondo? No, no uh, Dr. Afra. Okay, yeah. We can do a special on Dr. Afra one day. But, <laughs> um, who was the voice, did you say, for Hondo? Did you know? Oh, uh, 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 Jim Cummings, who did uh, Drake Mallard, Darkwing Duck, and he's Winnie the Pooh, and he did a lot of other stuff. But he actually voiced it through Clone Wars, Rebels, and Galaxy's Edge. So they, they brought him back multiple times to be the voice. Do you think we could put him in a costume? I don't know. <laughs> no. if he, he's older, so possibly. What do you need to put him in a costume for? Because what I think you should put him on. Don't do it for Vader. Just let him do the James Earl Jones oh. thing and do the voice. That's the oh. only one that should be given away. Well, now you have Bo Katan. I think Bo Katan set the precedent. And then uh, yeah, I think when you saw, I think when you saw like maybe uh, when you saw Ahsoka Tana not really doing backflips or making sweet moves. What like, age are we constituting older? I think is he like in his seventies? Yeah, perfect timing. He'd be about a hundred in in this eight in, yeah. in weekend or whatever. So yeah. like, that's perfect timing for him. I think is we it, should. Is he the second or third person we've seen from Clone Wars? In because there's Saul Saw, Saw Gerrera, 
Mm-hmm. And then who was voiced by? Uh, I don't know who he's voiced by, but just seeing a Clone Wars character make it through and into live action. So Saw was in Rogue One. Yeah, Saw was in Rogue One. Uh, Bo-Katan made it into Mandalorian in Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. So that's the three. Well, technically, Voss was in both, but Voss, you saw him in the background first in one of the movies, and then you saw him in Clone Wars. So, like, I don't know how you qualify for that one. Just going back to Rogue, Rogue One with, with Saw Guerrero, I, I still was kind of annoyed by Forrest Whitaker playing it like he got kicked in the balls the whole time. Like, I get it. He had the thing breathing apparatus, but still, oh, I got kicked in the nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just, yeah. It was yeah. just it's tedious after a little while when he had to give like longer speeches. Like he didn't have to do it. Like, He's on the very ends of his spurts of his life. I know. <laughs> I know. I when, I go that, down, I when I go down and I'm dying, you will not hear me monologue. I will tell very short sentences. <laughs> I don't have much time. I'm not wasting my breath. <laughs> that is just the precursor for monologuing when you die. Um but yeah, no, yeah, I could give you that, Saul. And you're right. I think actually that was in Clone Wars first that came out of there. Huh. Yeah. I'm trying to think about it. That sounds about right. Yeah. That sounds about right. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, you got Tana too, but it's not the same character. And I mean, that's the first are you, you going to count uh, Maul in uh, Solo? Because mm. of the legs. Um, well, no, they. Yeah, because he, he, he was in the original movie. They come in half through him in, but the the one that showed up in Clone Wars was the one that showed up in the end of uh, Solo. That's a very valid point. Yeah, was it, was it Whitwer or I can't remember the name. Yeah, uh, w- w- yeah. yeah. They didn't use uh, Sarah Finowitz, who did it in Phantom Menace, and then they used Ray Park's performance, physical performance. Yeah, so, exactly. Cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there's that. I mean, there's see, this is what I love about Star Wars. There's all types of dorky fandom, including what you guys just did right there. Uh, and there's the cool fandom, like everything that I do. Because everything- <laughs> 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 uh, all right, everybody, uh, last notes on uh, Hondo. Do we think I think he could play to many, a, many a things? I mean, you could bring him what look, he's at the parks, yeah. people know who he is. Oh, yeah, they love to sell merch. And, and, and more more people are becoming much more familiar. Figure. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. becoming it's much legit. more fam- familiar with who he is and where he fits. And th- I mean, for us not to see a lot more of him, I would I would be dumbfounded to be a hundred percent honest. That is a funny point. Those excuse me, those Galaxy Edge uh, figures that they dropped at Target, and that one was a harder one to get. Like a lot of those are characters that you like. They're pretty mainstream. Like, yeah, the, the scarf truders or whatever are kind of a little. They actually have the little. They still brought them back though, didn't they? They have the yes, they did. They have they have the little uh, droid that's over there that nobody has still to this day bought. And yeah, some of the people bought the like cantina the little, uh, DL, the little whatever. Green yeah, green. whatever the one is that's at Galaxy's Edge, the red yeah, yeah the DL one. But like you can find those. Those are going to be probably peg. Those are probably going to be the only peg hangers from the Galaxy's Edge thing. Everything else seems to to sell out in it. But yeah. Hondo was like the hunted one. Like they, oh. you weren't getting. You know, Cardinal was pretty hard, but Hondo. Hondo was tough. People were hiding Hondos. Um, and and I appreciate my birthday gift. Thank you, sir. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Happy birthday. <laughs> and it's your birthday script. It's two for one. Uh, go especially, ahead. Especially with all the TV series is coming out and movies like. He can yeah. pop up in a prequel one. He could pop up in a later one. Yeah, he could pop up all over. He's yeah. he's an efficient character. Like he has a personality that you don't have to have him in the episode a lot, and mm-hmm. he delivers a lot to that episode by just having him be there. Like he's just he's a big character for being not a known character. If that makes sense, I don't know. And but a very he leaves easy, mark. He, he leaves very, an impression on you. Yeah, you very have. easy tie-in. Please do better than this, though. Please don't do this. Just give him an action. Line. Yeah, well, that's comic book form. Yeah, I know, but still, like, it, it, give him a little bit more. It should be good. So that's cool. Uh, but he does have planes, and you can. You're right. Like he can. There's a lot of, especially if he runs a transport company. There's a lot of places that you can put him in and out now. Transport solutions. Yeah, and if you actually want to bring back, that's another thing. If you ever want to bring back Chewie or the Millennium Falcon just for show. 
you can always if you need to tie two characters together that are on opposite ends or quarter ends of the the you know galaxy it, oh there's a transport company oh here he comes and now you have, a, you have a way to bridge that gap for a a smooth introduction of how they met or how they got together or uh, there's a lot they can do with that does anybody know his speech in galaxy's edge because he does talk about the transport company there and how he's got a bunch of links and i wonder too if they'll play that throughout into it because if these people already know who you know what i'm saying like it's always trying to relate to the general <clears throat> not just us like they're well, trying to relate to the general public boba fett like he he's the one that talked Boba into like, Hey, your dad would do this. And like, he, he knew Boba as a young person. It'd be kind of cool to see Boba, see him again. Yeah. Cause wasn't Boba going to kill somebody or something at that point? And didn't he talk him out of killing him? Yeah. It were like, like your father, would, your father would have done this or something like, yeah. Like he, he, he tied it in and said something. And then that kind of like clicked for Boba and you're like, Oh, that's kind of, that was kind of, that was a good thing that he did. Like he didn't have to do that. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That is good. The kid from being a murderer. Yeah, <laughs> he later grows up to become a murderer, and then <laughs> and then his girlfriend, then his Fire is not a there. murderer. It's business. Yeah. So, or you could have him. Did hey, did Beckett ever die? Do we remember? Did he die? At the end of he, he survived. He survived. He did. How not, cool would it be? Not. How cool would it be if Bubba comes back and goes, "Nah, but I got somebody." You know, he pulls the uh, my favorite, the duels of fate, all the time, and has them lined up, and then goes. Mm. I got somebody else to see. And then you see Hondo just bad Hondo walk in and go, I think it's funny, huh? And kicks, kicks back in right <laughs> off. Well, you guys were talking about having like the voice actors be like in the suits. I was thinking of that watching the Rebels episodes of Hondo where you had the a little, I don't know, not squid, but I don't know. He's James Hong, low pan, like the, the, the Asian actor. He did the voice. Like, I can't see him getting in a suit to, to be like a little. But he could still do what they did with Darth Maul. Ugnot? You're seeing the Ugnot? Not the Ugnot. No, it was like a. I don't know, like Hondo ripped him off. And then when he came, Hondo came back in like the later episode of Rebels, he was like, hey, we're partners now. And they're like, oh, oh God, yeah. not this guy. And yeah. it was it was Lopan. Yeah. That's how I always think of oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. The little. Um, it was um, like a red, kind of squiddy kind yeah, of. Yeah, he's got that yeah. big pig nose. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, he, actually uh, he looked kind of Gungan ish. Like, he, was, uh, he was the one that. That they that Hondo sold uh, Hera to, right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, so. The Prince criminal guy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Must yeah, not get put him in a suit. But you could have like do what they did with Maul, where you have someone do the physical, and then he just be the voice. Yeah, That'd be yeah. nice. Yeah. Same thing with Jim Cummings; he can do that. Okay. That's and never worked in a film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's it. I think we're good. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. We had a couple uh, couple good things. Just remember, uh, this is definitely a cameo. So make sure you're buying yeah. this book for the cameo of uh, Hondo. Because that's yeah, right. for Cad Bane. And that, yeah, that's Cad <laughs> Bane as well, correct? Yep. Yeah, I was joking. Like, you're buying it for Cad Bane. You're not buying it for the cameo. <laughs> you get that added bonus of Hondo. You're not buying it for this. Cherry on top. <laughs> Hey, if, if Dark Side's in the background on a TV, I mean, come on, Hondo yeah. in a crowd shelling a bid. No, hey, no, that he doesn't yeah. even do the bid thing till the next one. So yeah. holocron images sell, so why not a guy in the background? Oh, that's right. That's true. Everything sells. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Buy what you like. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> I don't uh, think you, yeah, you can't buy that for a dollar anymore. I bet you would. <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. What? Anything I'm else? The I guess do your thing. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the uh, adventures and tales of Hondo. Please go down. Oh yes, please go and visit our friends at Bird City Comics and use code Darkside D A R K S H D E to get a discount over there and please shop all of their products online say hi to everybody there anthony and laura tell them dark side sent you <laughs> then go down force push that like and subscribe saber smash that bell so you can be alarmed every time that the greatest star wars chat this side of the galaxy comes on for you to join us and may the force be with you 
Always. Always. Except for Jen forgot to promote everybody else's show. Check out the toy show by Pete. Whenever he drops them, typically on Tuesday, I don't know what he's going to have in the next one. I'm going for Saturday mornings now. Not everybody's going for a different day on this channel. Okay, <laughs> New Year, we're going to have all new shows. We should be on Thursdays. This should be shown on Thursdays, so hopefully we're on Thursdays and everything's okay. Make sure you're checking out, wait, them, uh, the comic book women, uh, on Tuesdays, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern. You can figure out the math on the rest of the channel, what they need to do. We have got MCM. Saturdays. Saturday. Yep, Saturday nights. The drinking game is good. Oh, uh, we actually got it's got one of the best baselines of all time for their drinking game. Do I have it here? That's about as much as we're gonna give you that. But <laughs> hey, MC, <laughs> just getting into it. <laughs> They're great. Everybody always dances. I love pulling that early so they can see it. Make sure you check out the the starship of all the shows so you can see all the boys still chatting it up. I think they're on episode like 200 or something who knows um it is uh tales from the flip side and then uh grab the hottest top tens of tens that you could possibly get and that is on friday, friday. and then sunday's vintage voyage hey solo and mando review no more random review there this is mando reviews done bro all right. Well, hey, we will do a Mando review. Yeah. We're probably doing the Bad Batch review while this is showing. So we don't know when we're going to do the Bad Batch review, uh, but when we do, we'll do it. Or maybe Clone War review and whatever other review. Yeah, we'll fill in. That's it. Let's still try to see if I can get us out of here. We can't get us out of here. All right. We're out of here.